Let's try a tie a dragonfly nymph. This uh, his hook is a Tiemco 2302. This happens to be a size 10. Thread I'm using is Uni 6 and Brown. And begin the thread about midway down the shank. Take it back into uh, just a little bit past the barb of the hook. I've got some latex, one eighth, one eighth inch wide. I've cut a little taper into it, tied in at the back end. Stretch it out as I tie it in. Now to create the underbody, I'm going to use furry foam, and it doesn't matter what color it is. So buy the stuff that everybody gets rid of, that they uh, stick in the discount bin. And this thing is about oh quarter to three eighths of an in eighth inch wide. Doesn't really matter. And just cut a slab of it off. This happens to be a blue stuff or gray, blue gray. I'm gonna take it, wrap it to the back. Right at the tie-in point, bring my thread up to the mid-shaft again, or three-quarters, two-thirds shaft. Now I'm going to take that furry foam, that strip, and wrap the body. And what it does is it gives me bulk. And just by laying a layer up on the top, I don't lose as much as my um, gape. I lose a little bit by wrapping, but not very much. You can see how it bulges out. If you look at a real dragonfly nymph, first off, don't pick it up. The darn thing can bite and they hurt. Second off, they're, they have a tendency to a little fat in the body. Depending on the species, they can have a tendency to be a little fat, a little more broad. So we're going to make it make these things a little bit broad. So tie off that end, just a couple wraps, and tie it down. Laying down quite a bit of wraps on here. Bring my thread up to the front again. Now I'm going to take a pair of pliers and flatten it a bit, just so I get more breath on my on my fly. You don't have to do this. I just think that of the dragonfly nymphs that I've seen, they're a little bit more broad, a little flattened out their body. So I just squish it. And now I'm going to just take uh, overlap overlapping turns with my latex. I'm just trying to cover as much and not to have too many of the uh, too much of the uh, furry foam show up. It doesn't really matter. It's going to get colored up anyway. Now you can tell I don't have too too much pressure on here because I really want those ridges to show. Take that latex, oh, it's about at the two-thirds mark. And tie it off. You want to tie it off really well because what's going to happen is I put, I put tension on the, on the latex, cut it, and then I don't have a, as much of a tag in. I've got those extra wrap there because that's where I'm going to put my legs. And it gives me a good base for my legs. I take my pliers again. Flat nose and just push the body just a little bit more just to flatten it out, just to give it a little breath. I moved my fly just to give me a little bit more access to the, to the uh, abdomen. Now, if you ever look at most bugs, they're darker on top than they are underneath. 
So most of my marker coloring, I'm going to leave the uh, latex natural colored underneath, but I'm going to go really heavily dark uh, a mahogany brown on top or a dark brown on top. As you can see, I'm going with the grain of the uh, latex right now to color it. And at the end later, I'll go against it, and so I'll pick up more color on the edges to define my segmentation just a little bit more. Now this is uh, Loon's UV resin, and I'm going to coat most of it. And what it does is give me translucency, gives me depth, and also protects the fly. This stuff flows really nice. Now you're going to put it on pretty thick, so you'll need to spend a little time letting it uh, cure with your flashlight. But you can see that segmentation really well. Right now, you can't see it, but I've got my little UV flashlight and hitting that baby so it'll go, it'll harden up on me. It's going to take a while. I'll actually two, take two lamps at the same time, both my laser and my, my flashlight. Now I've got some dark brown goose biots. Oh, excuse me. I've taken a piece of medallion sheeting that's about 3 eighths of an inch wide and folded it at a 90 degree angle. And that's going to be my wing pads. Now I'm cutting it at an angle, it's kind of the ma match the angle of the body as it goes down on both sides. And then I'll round it off just a bit, I'll take the points off. I'm going to add another piece of medallion sheeting, the same stuff, across the top. And what it'll be is it'll become my wing case. Now these are some dark brown goose biots, and you want them to flare out. 
and the length, they should just go past the length of the body. I'll put two on each side. One, the second one goes a little bit shorter and is angled downward. The root. When I usually fish this fly, it's usually, you know how in the morning you go and you'll be fishing really, really well. And then as soon as the sunlight hits the water, it slows down. Well, what's happening? The fish are scared. And so what I'll do is I'll take this dragonfly nymph and hang it out there and put it out on my still water line and let it hit the bottom and just let it sit there. Then I'll just do a real quick snap tug on it hoping that it'll raise a little bit of dust off the bottom. Those fish will just crush this fly. The problem I have with this fly is when the trout eat it, they have a tendency to take it deep because they really go after it. They know that this fly can just shoot off on them from its, uh, it'll shoot, uh, propel, it'll pro uh, propel itself by shooting water out of its back end and it'll take off. So first off, it's a lot of protein. They recognize it as food. They see it, they know they got to eat, hit it and hit it hard. They have a tendency to take it deep. That's the, old, that's the biggest regret I have with this fly is that, the, is that the trout take it deep as well as the bass. Now I've got some 50 pound mono and I'm taking it and I'm crimping it so I get a flat spot in the middle of it. And it's about an inch long, three quarters of an inch long. Now I'm gonna take those, that piece of uh, 50 pound mono and wave it through my lighter. And that flat spot will sit on top of my, is where I will tie in at. So you can see my eyes, and there's a flat spot in between there. And I use the, the jaw of the tweezers to protect that flat portion so it doesn't melt into it. And just figure eight it on. Now, I don't know what it is, but guys have a tendency to let it go. I got fat fingers. I use those tweezers to apply those eyes. I put a little dab of uh, super glue on there just to make sure they don't go anywhere. They don't roll. Most of the time they roll on me. Now I'm going to take another goose biot and they'll look more like my antenna, but I tie them in right behind the eyes.
So I have them face forward and they splay outward. And trim off the excess. Now I'm going to make a little bit of a dubbing loop, take my thread back into the tie-in point for my wing pads and my legs, and the dubbing loop is, is going to be, I'm going to use uh, Hair's Mask in Rust. I've got a good brush and I just need to wrap. And brush back the hair as I wrap. That worked out pretty good. Then need to have to trim. Now I'm going to brush everything back with my fingers, moistened fingers, and pull my medallion sheeting over the top. And tie it right behind, before, right in front of the eyes. And then once again, a couple times right behind the eyes. Now I'm going to take my medallion sheeting then again and pull it back over the eyes. And tie it down. Now what I'm going to do is take my medallion sheeting, that wing case, and actually fold it in half. And then parallel to the medallion sheeting, I'm going to cut it. We call this a mountain fold in origami. And see I cut it right down the middle there, and that gives me a pair of wing pads. Additional wing pads up on the top. And that's my dragonfly nymph. I trim a little bit underneath. 